We talk about the paranormal each and every Saturday night for the beginning of the show, and then we usually wander off into talking about snacks before the show I is like over. Food. So we do have some guests in the studio tonight. We will find out what their favorite snacks are, <laughs> as well as you know some of their paranormal experiences as well. But we've had a long day today. It's uh, it's 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 been rough. It started off with rain, but it has been a very long day. I started off the day completely soaking wet from torrential monsoon downpours. I was not happy about that. It, see, we we were at the Middleboro Paracon. We today. were. And uh, why don't you introduce our guests tonight, Stephanie? Our guest tonight is a very good friend of mine. No, both guests. Don't don't make John feel like he's not welcome. I did it on purpose because he was... <laughs> I just, knew as soon as she said a very good friend of mine, she wasn't talking about you. Oh, he was just giving me shit for not including him on That's my... That's right. Uh, I look out for you. I make sure oh, your by the tacos way, I went, are there. Your I, mic is I right put there. it on the radio right before... I went, did I went, you really? No, I'm just kidding. Stop it. You have a mic hanging in the air. You know that, that's right? Okay. Um, so Yeah, that's yours. Our, uh, the guest that our audience does not know is from Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters, Season 10 and Season 11, Miss Sherry DiBenedetti. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all she has to say. Oh, well, that's so. it. That's it. Sherry, Sherry out. <laughs> We're done. No. So, but we, we were at you can, the... You can push up. This is, it's okay. You don't be afraid. This, you know what? The headphones are really too big for my head. See, not only am I small, <laughs> <laughs> the headphones don't even fit. Hey. Oh, there's so many comments that could be said. Listen, <laughs> is this going to be a dirty version of Spooky tonight? Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, my oh God. God. We've spent... A good portion of our day entertaining each other. You did miss a good story <laughs> earlier, though, Tim. We'll have to tell you about it later does off this, the air. Does this include the dancing pickles? Yes, <laughs> about dancing pickles. Why does it have to be off the air? Right. It's not really that we're not bad. on the air, so we're good. Oh, that's true. So you do know that I have a set of dancing pickles tattooed <laughs> on my leg, right? I've heard that you have a, a weird <laughs> tattoo in a weird place. Okay. So Sheree didn't know that. So we're standing there, and I was very hot at the Oliver House at the investigation. I said, I would be wearing shorts, but I'm pretty embarrassed showing off my dancing pickles. <laughs> Her mind went somewhere else. I didn't know about the tattoo. She was like, pickles, I, you have two? I, I, right. I didn't know about the tattoo. Her, Her mind response went somewhere was else. golden. Yes, it was. Um, you talking about the boys? <laughs> and I'm like, no. I literally have two tattooed dancing pickles on my leg so i had to show everybody and of course other people wanted to see and so know. if you're embarrassed by the tattoo why do you have it oh i'm getting it covered up it was a mistake okay yeah so i'm getting so it covered what, up. how does that mistake happen um a lot of alcohol and an artist that's never tattooed letting them tattoo on me okay yeah that's you walked it. in you said i want a picture of don rickles <laughs> and instead yeah. they heard <laughs> dancing pickles <laughs> because who would uh, want a pickle uh, who would want a don rickles picture on their right. body so my uncle has a tattoo of Jiminy Cricket way up on his upper thigh. Well, really? That's, that's yes. awkward. And, and I, said yes. to him, I said to him, I said, why do you have a tattoo of Jiminy Cricket so high up on your thigh? And he says, because I have to drop my pants to talk to my conscience. <laughs> oh, my God. And, <laughs> no, that's, that's a true story. <laughs> true story. <laughs> so uh, we are going to be talking about some paranormal stuff. And, we are. And, and weird and tattoos. And, we do have John Brightman in studio again. And, and he uh, is a very she, good friend. She says again. She's like, oh, he keeps again. coming. Yeah. Although it was her up. idea. Can we, I do anything right today? We pull up. We see him out there in his white Ford with his fidget spinner and his man bun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I, private joke. Private yes. Joke. I don't have a man bun. Or do you have a fidget spinner? No. All Thank right. God. So, but we were at the Middleborough Paracon earlier today. Great turnout. What a great event for the first time ever. Yes. yes they had um, a lot of fun. And they helped raise a lot of money and a lot of awareness for the Oliver House, which... Stephanie and I both got a chance to see John. You got a. Fr- I mean, everybody. We this week. Stephanie went a little earlier this week, but yes. for the rest of us, first time ever going over there and checking it out. What a place! It was awesome. Um, I'm actually going to be there next weekend doing a full-on investigation that sold out. So I'm looking forward to it after seeing the activity that people were getting while they were there. And I was just taking a tour before because the the Nick Nick Groff tour is going on tonight in Middleborough. It is. So I know I can say that on the radio because people by the time they get over there they'll be done. So I'm like, yeah, Nick Groff's in Middleborough. People knew he was there. Right, tickets. it's not a secret. But so the the Nick Groff tour is there. So they were coming to use the Oliver House, and so 
Christy was like, why don't you come over really quick, take a tour, because I'd never been. And she's like, I'll show you around. So she gave me a tour. And when we're on the second floor, we're in the back side of the house looking into uh, Peter Oliver Jr.'s room. Yes. And as I'm looking across that closet, I see something walk across. And I was like, oh, well, there's a jacket in the hallway. So I think I just looked really fast and thought, that, but like then I'm think, playing it over in my head. I'm like, no, this thing moved behind the jacket. So I saw something there, and then I found out that Stephanie saw something similar the other night when she was there, and Christy says that it's that room, there's been a lot of reported activity of something moving across. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I had a few quick experiences in the hour and a half that I was at the house on Wednesday night, and I was pretty surprised. And I was standing right in that room when you first walk in, which is right off the kitchen, and I'm looking at everybody, and they're talking to me, and I said, you guys don't hear that? They were like, what do you, what do you hear? I said, somebody keeps whistling. Who's whistling? And it was starting to annoy me <laughs> because all I could hear was whistling amongst people talking. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. And they're like, you heard the whistler? I was like, yes, is that a thing? They're like, yeah, we hear it all the time. There's a guy in here that whistles. I was like, okay, cool, awesome. It's a ghost of handsome John Pruitt. It, Mac, the house was Mac got, Mac got that joke. Yeah, I did. I know he did. <laughs> Nobody else did. <laughs> Sorry, no, I friend. Did, friend. I did <laughs> The house is pretty amazing, though. Chat room. Anybody get the handsome John Pruitt joke? They're all going to start Googling it, but you you get it? No, I I have no idea. Thank God I'm not alone. No. I'm always alone in this. That was the tow tow (laughs) truck driver with the hook for a hand in Adventures of Babysitting. No. Wow. (laughs) Wow. The obscure things that I know. Yeah. And and what's funny is Matt Costa knows most of them, too, because like he's heard me make so many stupid references over the years. But ask me to do something important, I can't do it. Uh, one of the things, too, that I was also impressed with, with the Oliver House, is the passion that Christy and all the volunteers have for it. Mm. And that the town has realized that, hey, wait a minute, this paranormal thing can really help us out with what we're trying to do here. Yes. And when you have a place like that that has so much history, a place that has... Already, I mean, that's what's funny about it is it didn't really have a big paranormal backstory before they started utilizing this avenue as a fundraiser. So it's not like you can say, oh, it's like Lizzie Borden's house where everybody knows what goes on there. I mean, this is a place that they put on the map paranormally, but also use the paranormal to put it on the map. Right. Which is, in my eyes, you know, that's the way that it should work. These things should go hand in hand. You shouldn't be afraid of the ghosts. You know, you shouldn't be afraid of promoting the ghosts. If you know that that's going to turn into a revenue stream and an awareness stream for people. Yep. And that's the biggest problem is a lot of historical societies still are like, oh, no, no, no. We don't want anything to do with that. You know, we talked about this last week with Ty, that there's still that stigma of I don't want to have, no pun intended, ghost hunters walking through my my place. But they're going to be more respectful than most of the people that are going to come on a tour. You know, the the average you know, summer resident coming into Middleborough and, and looking for something to do during the day that goes and takes a tour of the Oliver estate isn't going to be as respectful as a person that walks into the place and says, wow, I'm making a direct connection with history from the 1700s. I'm going to make sure that I am reverential while I'm yep. here. So, and, it, and it's crazy because we've talked about it in the past, me and you, Tim, that there's a couple locations locally that one being in Fall River, a big ship, yep. that won't let us know. You said parano- ship, you right? Know, ship. Okay, all right. Yes. That no paranormal <laughs> people are allowed on because they're afraid that they'll lose revenue from yeah, it. Yeah, they don't like the connotation and they feel like it's disrespectful yep. to those who served on the ship. But we're trying to give those who served and perished a voice as opposed to like a bunch of Boy Scouts that are just running around and, you know, giving each other wet willies. <laughs> that's, that's where you... St- Stick your tongue yeah, no, in there. For anybody no, that doesn't know okay what a wet willy is. Not all right. No. So no wet willies and no Hell aliens. no. I just want to make sure I explain what a wet willy is <laughs> to those who don't know. Like, why are you talking about Boy Scouts willies? <laughs> <laughs> That's not. a different show. Hey, what about a wet willy from an alien? No. Oh. Stop it right now. I actually think I would rather have an encounter face-to-face with an alien than get a wet willy. What does that tell you? What about a wet willy from an alien? No, that's what, that's just what you just said. said. Just I'm sorry, I was that. reading the chat room. No, not what, okay. What about a dry willy from an alien? No. What about Alf and Willy? No, he stop. Was an alien. Okay. Stop. He got it. He oh. got it. Oh, yes. Hey, Willy, give me four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, and oh my the Paracon itself, though, like, it was 
as you said, you know, it was raining a little bit in the morning, which right. everybody was worried about that putting a damper on it. I don't think it did at all. I agree. You know, it was so. it was just a little bit of an inconvenience, but it didn't ruin the day at all. Fantastic time, great lineup of speakers. Uh, we had uh, John, you kicked it off. Ken DaCosta, Mark Arvola, and you know some guy named Tim Weisberg, and Stephanie. You know, when we <laughs> had, and I and I poked my head in during your did you during your lecture? I opened the door behind you because I didn't want to be distracting to you. And I just I poked, thought I heard that, but I I just poked my sure. my head in for a second and just watched and saw it. And yeah, everybody was having a great time. And it, they really were. They enjoyed it the whole day. And I then mean, I walked away thinking I should have probably taken some photos for you because you're yeah, building a been website. Nice. But Thanks. I realized that afterwards. And by that point, I was already going over to the booby truck. My uh, my official <laughs> photographer had to leave early right when I started my lecture. So the, that was probably the highlight of the day for me, the boo boo queue. I thought that was a really clever name. Hey, the mac and cheese was good. I didn't get to eat. It's it's two different. There was two different barbecue places, but I guess they kind of worked mm-hmm. together. So That's there was cool. the BBQ and then the other one, which is in my. I have their card, but um, yeah, they have like giant spiders and stuff, and uh, yeah, it was really good. Giant and spiders, like you know, like like decorations. Oh, okay, decorations, all right. Like on the like, truck <laughs> and yeah. on you, the you on the sm- They had two smokers like right out front right. that like, said no? BBQ right right on the front of it in bright orange letters. Yeah, I, I did see the um, the advertisements for it, and I saw the booth, and I just thought that was a really clever name and really cool to have at a Paracon. And they had something that other Paracons have not had. What is that? And it was a, a good move. They had booze. They did have booze. Yes. They were selling alcohol. They had a, a bartender there, a mobile bartender or whatever you want to call it. And I thought that was really cool. That yeah. was cool. And and nobody <laughs> nobody was overdoing it. Nope, no, nobody was. Everybody was, was awesome. just enjoying a nice cold beer yep. while they had some of their barbecue food and walking around. Was, and, and it was hot out there. It mm-hmm. was very so hot. So it was really probably that's good my, for some people to just cool down that way. That's how my hair ended up looking like this. And you know, it was, everything was reasonably pr- priced. I think everybody enjoyed themselves. Everybody had a good time. Good crowds for the lectures. Yes. And so one thing I do want to mention is, and, and you know what, I know that I know that Mark is listening. He is. And and I want to thank them for we you know we were kind of messing around all day mm-hmm. saying like we're in this haunted town hall. We want to we want to have the chance to yeah, poke around a little bit. And so we did get the chance to go upstairs where Nick was doing his VIP event. We got to go up there and hang out with everybody for for a while. But the uh, husband of one of the select people mm-hmm. in town was saying, you know, we'll we'll get you into some other places. So we, we really wanted to go into the basement. So we were kind of harassing him all day a little bit, like, mm, don't forget us, we want to go in the basement. So he brought us down there toward the end of the, the time that we were there. And Mark spoke today for the first time, I think, publicly. I don't think he's done this publicly yet. Something that I've been talking to him a little bit for a while and, and something that some people who have been involved in this with him know, but they weren't really going out in the public with this. Because on the surface... It's going to sound like you're going to, you know, people are going to roll their eyes and be like, really? But a while ago, Mark said, we've been doing something really different and really unique. And everybody knows the EchoVox app. We've talked about Mm -hmm. the EchoVox app in the past. Well, he's a big user, a a big fan of the EchoVox app. And he said that he was communicating with the late Ed Warren through the EchoVox app. And I was like, okay. He's like, I know, I know how it sounds. But when they started getting this voice that was coming through claiming to be Ed, they brought it to John Zaffis, right. who is the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. And John said, no, that's, that's Ed's voice. And so now it's become an ongoing experiment with them, an ongoing communication. I shouldn't say experiment, an ongoing a series of communications with Ed. And they talk mm-hmm. to him through this all the time. And so this was the first time that Mark's coming out and talking about that and talking about what, what has hap- been happening with that. So I said, you know, when we go down to the basement, Mark, you're going to bring Echo Vox? And he's like, of course, of course. And I'm just thinking we're going to just go down there and poke around because you had just been there was, a, yeah. a few months ago and saying, you know, it's very active down there. There's jail cells down there. Mm-hmm. There was a fire at one point. There's all kinds of stories of things that people have encountered in the basement. So he turns on the Echo Vox app and something starts communicating with him immediately. I go and walk down this, like, I don't know, I guess they have like records or something on a shelf, you know, like like not music records, but like town records. And so we go into this room and I can see a shadow kind of moving around. So I call Lauren in mm-hmm. and I'm like, Lauren, do you see that shadow too? And she's like, yeah, I can kind of see it, but it like wasn't very pronounced. And so I start walking back there and we're getting these outright cold spots and the basement was pretty warm. Right. 
I mean, we were expecting it to be a lot cooler down there because it it's a basement, but like it wasn't. It was 86 degrees out. Yeah, it wasn't cooler. Right. And so we're getting these like cold spots. So I'm like, well, it must be this air conditioning vent over my house, over my head. And Mark shines the light up there and he says, that's, that's, that's not an air conditioning <laughs> vent. That's, mm-hmm. that's a light. That's a fluorescent light. I was like, oh, okay. Well, then where are these spots coming from? And then there's like a dehumidifier over in the corner. So I'm like, well, that must be kicking out some cold air or something. And he walks over. He's like, no, this is kicking out warm air Mm -hmm. because it's taking in the, you know, that's. So I was like, okay. Then how do we explain this cold spot that just keeps moving Mm -hmm. all around? And now, meanwhile, through the through the echo box, they they have Ed communicating with them. Right. So and so I'm like, well, is that the same Ed? And then like, that's the the voice that we get. So we got to communicate with, I guess, Ed Warren in the basement of the Middleborough Town Hall. Which is really cool. Yeah, it was very I'd cool. love to hear more about that and and talk to Mark in length about his experience. Because, unfortunately, I had to miss his lecture. And I'm a little we sad will. about we'll, it. We'll have to have him come on and, and we'll do a whole episode where we talk about no, I'd love what they've to. been doing. Absolutely love to. And, you know, I have to say. That's I, one of those ones. we got to get them to come down for that. Oh, I'd love to have them in studio. Do that in person, I, and we'll try and do it right here. I um, no, that would be amazing. I I got to briefly spend time with them at Salem Con, which they run. But to be able to spend time with them all day today was awesome. Just to really get to know them and I told you they're nice people, I, hilarious. People. I agree, absolutely. So I was excited for that. We had a great we, time. Today. We were lucky. We had a room full of people that we are did. very down to earth, very fun. You know, we can all joke with each other and not take it too seriously. Right. Although I feel really bad for the people that were coming into the room and yes. being like, what is going on in here? Yeah, it was like a weird party that people were walking into. <laughs> so yeah, Nobody wanted to show, nobody wanted to come in no. to the room because they, they all just thought, thought that we were just having they a thought it was party like a, over a, here. Like right. a dressing room. So, somebody yeah. asked us one point, is this a dressing room? We're like, no, come on in. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Hang please out come with in. us. <laughs> Well, and also they looked at it and they're like, well, there's a lot of Swedish fish in there. So There was a lot of Swedish fish in there. I was kind of disappointed you did not bring your gummy bears. You know, I didn't have time to stop and get them, and I forgot that I had Swedish fish already packed that, in my bag. You got up late this morning. I didn't get up late. I just well, she doesn't, showed she up doesn't late. get up late. <laughs> <laughs> she gets up on time, meaning to be there on time. Uh, it just doesn't happen. I, I was awake at the right time. Welcome to my life, that everybody was always like, why are you late to everything all the time? Because... Life. Mm. I'm sorry. I mean to be on time, but I just show up late. And Listen, now Stephanie does the same thing. From the time that I text you to say I'm still in bed to going all, <laughs> getting ready, going to Staples, getting those pictures printed, and getting there only 15 minutes late, that is a freaking miracle. No, that's that's good. You gotta you gotta admit that that's that's fast. But well, even even I turned around sleep and I didn't. I did not. We did not get, get sleep. sleep. She was working on those photos till almost two oh, in the morning. That's yes, right. that's right. You did text me and tell me that. And then I didn't fall asleep till maybe like three three thirty. So. Okay. So you're right there. And I was here. I worked like a fourteen hour day yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna get up really early and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And then I was like, Yeah, no. Well, I walk in. Oh, everybody was so cheery this morning at nine thirty. You know, there's Ken all happy. There's Cody. It, there's Mark and Warren all happy, and I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Well, listen, my energy drinks saved me today because otherwise I would have been sleeping under the table they, at some point. They'd all already, they all had to travel, one. so they'd already already been up for a while. All you guys that had to actually drive, you know, Five you already minutes. had times to wo- a time to wake up. Yeah, yeah. mine was I, like an hour and a half. I used to work like a mile down the road from there, so I, I'm just used to still being half asleep driving down that road. So I think oh, I just I'm, naturally I'm, just started dozing off. I'm literally ten you minutes from that. there. You stopped that. You are. Yes. <laughs> I am not. I was about a half hour, but I got there on time. I wonder. I see them talking about coming on and doing that. I wonder if we can get John to come in. That would be awesome. No, that would be amazing. We can at least sure. get him to call in. I'm sure. No, I'm sure calling in. But I just. But said, if he's, you know, we'll, if he's around, we'll have to do dinner first too if they're coming down. Yeah, we'll see if we can get him to come up. There you go. We'll let him. We'll let him. Uh, We'll let him stay on the couch in the, oh, there in you the go. lobby if he needs For a place sure. to stay. <laughs> so we do have Sherry here. And we, we should, do have Sherry here. We should here. actually ask her some questions. <laughs> no, that's okay. And if anybody <laughs> wants to call in during the course of the show, 508-996-0500, 877-996-1420. Uh, you're from the North Shore area. Yes. Right? You don't, do you come down this way a lot? I never do. I is, never is do. That, is, <laughs> it, is it my fault? <laughs> yes. Is it because of me? Because I can leave. I we heard totally you were kidnapped her. Acidity, right? Yeah. 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 I try to stick away. Um, no, there's just really no reason for me to come. 
come down here, so I, I just I never do. So first time in Middleborough or first time in um, some of these places today, I'm sure. It's probably the first time in Middleborough. I mean, I they, they have I this festival. Don't. I don't know if there was a, if the sign out was it's coming up soon. They have this festival that they do every year called Middleborough Crazy Days, and people come from all over to go to this thing. So you might want to look into it. It might it might be worth coming back down for. It's Crazy Days with a K. You guys going? I don't you're know. You're coming down. I'll yeah, if you come down, we can all go. <laughs> as as, as Wareham residents, we are fundamentally opposed to getting involved with Middleborough events. Oh. So generally, it's like a... It's, well, I'm not I don't going even know by this, myself. I don't even know <laughs> if this is a real Wareham-Middleborough war, but I'm certainly... You're I'm, keeping I'm it going on by that yourself, hill. so... Yes, I was making Middleborough jokes all day. Yes. Hashtag Middleborough Two jokes. Middleborough people. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> well, who am I going to make them to? Nobody yeah. else is going to get it. Yeah, I don't know. Nobody I, else is gonna get I stayed in my own lane. Sherry and I had our own party in the corner. Yeah. It was safer that way. As I get <laughs> We're always message, in a corner. Go get us wine. Yes. Go get us wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. the I best joke. party, she didn't have to go Thank far. You. Yeah. No, yeah. It, he was already outside. So I said, hey, what are you doing? And then I joked when he came in. I said, my husband makes comments that I, I need to be nice because John treats me like a spoiled princess. He does. It's kind of ridiculous. Him and I are going to talk about this. He's giving you a huge head. Is that was it like a concert where they let you bring back like two drinks at a time? Yep. Nice. I could have brought more probably. They nice. didn't say anything. Well, they looked at you and they're like, "Yeah, you can drink seventeen. You can have whatever you want. Cups. Yeah. These little no, plastic that's cups. Just, that's just that's just how I treat any of my clients. Right. Uh, same for Sherry. Same for Tim. Anybody. That's why he said that you were <laughs> you were a princess. It didn't crack my back today. <laughs> Oh, He's like, that's because I can't lift you, fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, coming down to this area, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's what's great. I mean, all of New England, really, is we have all these great old haunts. And we've talked in the past about some around where you live. And we have some around here. And there's just there's a lot of a lot of ways to kind of use the ghost stories to pick up on some of this history. And... That's what today was about, was about focusing on a, a, a forgotten history. I mean, the, the Oliver House, for example, I mean, people don't even know why it should be famous. And they don't understand the connotations of what went on there. Which and, is crazy. Right? I mean, I know that you guys are probably familiar with it, but for the audience, if you're not familiar with it, this is where they found letters. Supposedly Ben Franklin, but that's up for debate. But supposedly Ben Franklin visited this house and found letters hidden in a closet that talked about Revol- that talk- talked about being loyal to the crown, and they put that family on trial for being traitors to the revolutionaries in this closet that you can go into that still has the same wallpaper that it had yes. when Ben Franklin went into that closet. Which is crazy. Do you not understand what I'm talking about? You can put your hand on the door handle that Ben Franklin touched. Mm, yeah. And that's just something that I don't think people can appreciate and, right. and understand. I definitely did. But I also am the biggest history nerd on the planet. So. But you can't get that, like if you no. are out in, you know, California. <laughs> no. No. no, we talked to friends that investigate other places, and you probably visited other places work, w- working on ghost hunters, where people are like, "Oh, we've got great history here. This place is over 110 years old." You're like, "Just so so crazy." You're like, yeah. "I have a dining room table that's 110 <laughs> years old." <Right. laughs> like, Yep. Take a drink of water. <laughs> it's true, At least you though. have I mean, some. Even, yeah, have even Sherry, that. while she was there, she's like, I want to spend time in there <laughs> and just see what I get because the history, yeah. you know, if, that's if, in that room. If anybody needs water, there's a machine out no, in the hall. No, there's, empty. there's none. It's empty? Yep. And I'll change it. No. We'll take a break mm-hmm. in a little while and I'll change it. Perfect, because I'm I'm in need, for sure. I Yeah. I, I don't know who would have drained it out and not mm, bothered to replace weird. it. Weird. Hmm. Who would have done that? Wait, we're YouTube only? <laughs> the guy that lives here. Mm. <laughs> who never changes it? Who leaves it empty? You didn't hear me when I came in and said it needed to. I walked need to be changed so up. so and all right. We've now reached the portion of Spooky South Coast where we talk about snacks. Okay. There was a bag of Twizzlers. There's a lady here, a very nice lady, who stocks her desk up with snacks for everybody to share. <clears throat> and you know how there's always that one person who takes the last of something but doesn't take the last. Like leaves one, somebody leaves like that one little sip of milk at the bottom so they don't have to throw it away, or you know they leave one cookie left in the package. Yeah. I walk in there, this giant bag of Twizzlers. There's two Twizzlers left in the bag. I'm like, come on, just eat the last two, you know. But these Twizzlers, I've never had these before. Mind blowing experience. 
creamsicle Twizzlers. Ew. Yeah, that Ooh. doesn't even sound good. No, no. they were very good. Oh. No. I haven't had them, but I can only imagine. And no. Are you are you creamsicle fans to begin no. with? See, oh, I that's am. your problem. Yeah, no. exactly. I that's am my, too. That's my problem. Oh, then you <laughs> might like cream. Cre- well, listen. I make that in creamsicle. Nice. <laughs> Let me tell you because I discovered this years ago. I don't know if they still do it, but because I think Dunkin' Donuts got rid of the culotta, right? Yes. So I used to go to Dunkin' Donuts. They always had the vanilla culotta, and they had the orange juice culotta. Yes. And I would tell them I want a creamsicle culotta. And they would whip it up, and I would go over to the liquor store, and I would get a nip of vodka, and I would just pour it in there, and that would be like the perfect like sitting-by-the-pool drink. Awesome. Nice. Just so good. Well, it's like life hacks. You know? What's better, that or your half-and-half half tea and lemonade? Half-and-half half tea and lemonade is the ultimate drink. But is it better than your creamsicle drink? No, the creamsicle drink is for having alcoholic beverages. Yes. Yeah, but you could do alcoholic beverages with the other one, too. No, no, I, I, I okay. keep my half and half pure. All right. Yes, I take my just, half and half Just had to clarify. See, I just, like I told him, since I make a nice creamsicle drink, I'll have to bring him some <laughs> of that. Because you saw how everybody else liked my drinks up at Salem. Oh, I mean, at yeah. uh, the other Cherry and I just watched. I know. Yeah, we But watched. it went quick, though. Nope. It, it did go quick. Su- Sudan, name, Sudan name just dropped the Peggy Lawton brownies in the chat room. He did. That was a it's a memorable <laughs> episode of Spooky South Coast where we were trying to remember those. The pe- you do you don't know the Peggy Lawton? No. Pe- no. It's, you know the brownies. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. The Peggy Lawton brownies are those big square brownies that they used to have like next to the register at convenience oh, stores. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Although I did hear that the see the Oliver House committee that had a table today was very smart. Because they put snacks out at their table, cookies and mm-hmm. brownies and cakes and everything. I missed that memo. Yeah, and so I didn't see that they, you know, they were you there. It? You walked right by it. I saw the wine right there. It was right in front, of, <laughs> right behind the wine. Oh, okay. and I saw nothing. They put out like I guess they had like brownies that were like quadruple chocolate brownies that everybody was raving about. That's too much chocolate oh, wow. for me, so I couldn't try one. But I tried the marble cake. Yeah, we wanted the some marble, marble cake. cake was it was, really looking, it was looking really good. I'm a big marble cake fan. I just I got it early because I didn't know. How it would be being out all day, right? So I got it early at like ten o'clock this morning, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, I was we were talking last week about the the deal that I have with the Newkirks with Greg Newkirk. I'm gonna trade him <laughs> Necco wafers for Skyline Chili. Really? Yes, because he loves Necco wafers and I love Skyline Chili, and you can only get that in Cincinnati. And we have the Necco wafer factory here in yep. Massachusetts. So, Shar, are you a Necco wafer fan? Me too. Ugh, I, I can't stand. Really? I don't know how anybody Ugh. can eat them. I don't no. think I've ever for anybody had that, them. for anybody that doesn't no. know. It's picture the something the size of like a communion wafer. Mm-hmm. Only says the guy who doesn't know anything about religion, but I know what a communion <laughs> wafer is. So it's about the size of that, <laughs> but it tastes like what little Yuck. what little sweet there is in a sweet tart. Nope. Imagine like they took that away. Wow. But it's not quite tart either. So how can you be yeah, upset? No, it's not tart. tart. It's, it's definitely, definitely it's not like tart. chalky. Yeah, it's like it's like eating chalk. We're gonna have to talk to Greg about this. Yeah. But no matter what color you get, there's like multiple colors, they all taste the yeah, same. So what's the, the point? But see, I solved that problem because I just dip it in milk. Ew, no. That, you dip ew. Necco wafers yes. in milk? No, you don't. Yes, I do. That's gross. Why do you are, you talking about, are you talking about Nilla wafers? Yes. No, 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 We're talking no. Necco. Necco wafers. Nilla wafers in milk <laughs> is the ultimate. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's, I will, that's fine. I thought that's what you meant, and no, you were just pronouncing I, it wrong. I knew there was no, something wrong there. like those candies. They're like in a roll. They're in a roll, right? Yeah. Yeah, it comes in like a roll in wax paper. You know oh. you're in, you know it's gonna it's, be shit when your candy is wrapped in wax paper. <laughs> yes, yeah. those things are nasty. I yeah. know what you're talking yes. about. No, and they're disgusting. multicolored yeah. in the roll, yeah. like some of them they're are like red, some are color. purple. Yeah. All right, do you yeah. want do you want do you want to hear my Nilla wafer yes. thing? Okay, this is my Nilla wafer life this. hack. This is this is what you do. You get a big glass of ice cold milk, mm-hmm. but you only fill it about halfway. You already went wrong. All right. You already went wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like milk, I can't help no, you. I don't really disgusting. drink milk, but milk is a must for this. Milk is gross. So a big glass, fill it halfway with ice cold milk. Take Nilla wafers, dump them into the cup to fill the entire cup. So they are soaking up the milk. No. And then, no, you just got a spoon. You just no. spoon them out. Oh, no. so no. good idea. What if you did that with ice cream? Nilla wafer party. It would work really good with vanilla I ice cream. I love Nilla wafers and vanilla ice I cream. I think that would be better than that. Milk. In fact, yeah, I think it was the yeah. box on the box of Nilla wafers. They have an ice cream that somebody stuck them all around. That's Maybe, oh, see yeah. now, now that sounds good. Mark just came in hot and said, 
They taste like the stick in the fun dips. That I can get on board with. But I, is you that know true? what, though? I like the stick in the fun so dip. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I do it's like that. That was actually sweeter. <laughs> that the stick is actually, like, sweeter. Okay. And All it's right. not. So you're wrong? You're tell, you, are you calling Mark out right now? Mark, you know I love you. But I just, it's, it, it does have a different taste yeah no it's, yeah, it, it's i don't know like if somebody chalky, just got me a bag of the stick and the fun dips i, I like would be that. happy yeah i, like I do i do dips. like mark's plan of using a twizzler as a straw at the next con <laughs> use the creamsicle twizzler john as a straw stick, that, a creamsicle stick that in our contract tell, tell john next time you contract us we have to have an entire box of the the stick from the fun dips i'll take the fun dip also okay really? yeah, yeah all right I so like just just fun dip yeah yeah okay write that down yeah, I'm making a Cassie, memo now. Cassie <laughs> asked a question about the candy cigarettes in the chat room. If, I don't think the, I've ever had one. If the oh, Nilla wafer, for, oh, they were they were definitely probably not okay by the time you were. Yeah, a kid. I don't think so. Yeah, no. Hey, listen, I I'm not that far in, behind. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they like they were phasing them out when my siblings were younger. Yeah. I can't remember the taste though. It was like, it was like sucking on. It wasn't. See, but those had a little bit of a sweetness to them. Yeah. Candy cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. they did. Do you? <laughs> You guys might remember because you're a little older than Stephanie. But just a little. Just a little. But do you remember when they had those like toy cigarettes? Yeah. That you could actually like smoke them and they but, would and puff they out sm- powder? Yeah, the little smoke. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't. You don't? I no, I don't that. remember that. <laughs> he's I like, don't. he's like, I went right to the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't yeah. I just went <laughs> straight to the real ones. He's like, I was four. My mom's like, what do you want at the store? I'm like, pack of marble ribs. <laughs> Give me some Lucky's unfiltered. But uh, no, yeah, they, that. you would like you would puff them, and they had this little yeah. end of them that would light up red, <laughs> like some little weird red thing that yeah. would light up, and it would push out like this powdery smoke. <laughs> yeah, huh. yeah, very weird. Okay, so that's that that's, concludes. Well, the we just showed our age. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah. Nope. That concludes the snack portion <laughs> of the show, at least for right now. For Something right now. else might pop up later. Well, we didn't get to ask Sherry what is her go-to yes, snack we on will investigations. Ask this is going to be our new question that we have to ask everybody. Yeah. We have to. I know. I think we... Um, I always have... Um, uh, Jesus, Gatorade. The um, the Fruit Punch Gatorade. I always have that. And um, in the wafers, the cookie... Wa- the what are they called? They're wafers, not <laughs> not, <laughs> not what we were just not talking wafers, about. No, 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 no. Like the, or the cookie wafers, not like communion the wafers, van- <laughs> like the oh, vanilla yeah. vanilla wafers type of stuff. Is that what it's called? No. Vanilla wafers. I know what she, she's talking about those the, packages. The rectangle ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, like a cream in the middle yes. and then like crispy. Yeah, yeah yes. those are pretty good. Because I, I need like that crunchiness. I need a sweetness and. Yeah, I don't know. So, Every <laughs> investigation does um, that. I know, I know that in seasons past, before you were on the show, a big thing with some of the cast members was Virgil's root beer. That uh, Tango and Grant, they used to get really excited for finding Virgil's root beer. Was there anything that was like kind of like a, a cast thing that they were always bringing to investigations or something that they had to have? Maybe during dinner time. I yeah I know I'm trying to think of what everybody's little their little things were. Um, of course I know Dustin always everywhere we go he has to have his his uh, little um, pie. like all those little pie desserts yes. and stuff he, everywhere he went. The man, the man should just buy stock and table talk. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts and pies. Yes. Yep. Um, He's always at Dunkin' Donuts. That yeah. boy. Yeah. I mean he was in the commercial. I know. This is true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's I don't I don't really know of anybody else. That <laughs> it was always him with his pies. That that's the only thing that I can I can come up with. Um, but you know, you have the snack tables and stuff. You know, so we're always hanging out. Well, maybe on the shows you work on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had our big snack tree. You know, so they they had everything, even vegetables and fruit. You know, we try to be healthy every now and then too. That's, you I, know, I did what we we did an episode of Haunted Towns, um, and I went and I hung out while they were filming, and I walked into the where they had kind of the home base set up, and they had a whole bunch of food, mm-hmm. like all laid out, like all different snacks, like even like bo- there was like a box of ring pops. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Like, what person is going to walk around? And and I'm sure that when you watch the episode, you'll probably see the cast members walking around with ring pops on their hands. Oh, you know, be I'd nice. be okay with that. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If somebody brought me a box of ring pops, I would be happy. <laughs> you don't need a box of ring pops. You just need one. No, you need multiple. It takes forever. When? No, it doesn't. You have five fingers. 
Hell yeah. yeah. So <laughs> my dad used to always, when we went on the Blue Hills, he would always go to the store and he would get us Ring Pops and Slim Jims. And that's what he would like stick in a backpack. And he's like, because if we end up having to get stuck on, on top, you know, it's, it's a small little hill. It's on a mountain. He's like, but if we get stuck on the mountain, we're going to live off Ring Pops and Slim Jims. Until somebody comes and rescues us. I always loved Slim Jims. I've never had a Slim oh Jim. Oh my god! And I still—I mean, weird? I don't—I don't eat them anymore. But oh my gosh, I always, always, always. Eat I them. won't even get into the gross I- story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I will for the sake of the audience. You guys are gonna get gross, grossed out by this. But my brother and I used to have a contest whenever we got a Slim Jim to see who could keep chewing it the longest. Stop it! And to see like. Who finally has to say, that's enough. I can't keep this thing in my mouth anymore. And we would we would go for a long, long time. Gross. We would actually, like, we'd allow ourselves a break while we were sleeping. <laughs> you know what? And take it out. <laughs> Are like, you serious that long? Put it on a napkin next to the bed and then put it back in the next day. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it would just turn white and stringy and gross. Ew. And so but, but would you would swallow be, it after? Uh, I No. Usually. No. Usually. <laughs> Oh, but, you know what? No, but, you know what? No. That is just as bad as wet willies. Okay. It, it, you you could an alien. I I, that far. <laughs> you could yes. You could swallow it because is, it would break up into like small pieces. So that's like it wasn't like you're. Sw- it's not like you're swallowing one big oh. chunk of it at one point. It would just eventually like string off and break up. Nope. Nope. You know, not okay. But it was. It it had. It lasted a long time. What is the longest time? I don't know. It was at least a couple of days. Wow. Yeah. Take so it out. after a couple days and you'd still... Take it out at meal times. Take it out when you're sleeping. I mean, we would only do it in the summertime because it would be weird oh, to be doing yeah, that Oh, yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not already, right? No, one yeah, time we yeah. did it during Christmas vacation. I remember one time we did it during Christmas vacation. Yeah. But yeah. And <laughs> like, and we never thought to like just take a... Like, it would always be like one bite. We're like, what if we just put the whole Slim Jim in our mouth? It would last longer, but we didn't. We weren't that smart. <laughs> The Slim Jim Challenge, they said. <laughs> hey, I still say we got to do Gross. that That other challenge that we talked about a long time ago. Which one? The Quahogs. We oh. did the Quahog one. No, like me and oh, you. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no, I'm done with the Quahog Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I'm the, done with it. <laughs> there I still be... think I can eat six of them in six minutes. Danny will take you up on that challenge. Danny Minkle, if you're listening. Minkle Boys Catering. We, we have we somebody who thinks he can beat right the time. Because I feel like we both have disgusted faces on. <laughs> <laughs> do we? Like, do you, probably. Do like, <laughs> anybody watching? Let do, us know. Do you like stuffed quahogs? No. I don't think I've ever had one. No. Do you, I don't even I know haven't either. Do you like clams? Seafood. No. As, as long as it's... Oh, you always cooked clams, right? It's not like it's... No, I don't can, like... I mean, you can raw, raw that's, clam, that's clams. That's what you're thinking of. Like okay. Uh, um, Oh, is it? So a quahog is like a big clam. Yeah. Like it, when you open it up, it's like this big, like gross. Kind of like an oyster. It looks like a. Yeah, I Stop got it. it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. So it does. There's Which no is other the, way. one of the reasons why I don't but got it. But what you do is you take that and you chop it up fine and then you mix it in with the stuffing. And then you take the stuffing and you put it into the shell <clears> and then you bake it in the oven. And Stuffed quahog. Yeah, some people call them stuffies, but it's a stuffed quahog. Does it taste like? It tastes like you're eating stuffing with is, like does clam it taste flavor. Like, oh, clam. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Um, so well, you I probably put, would like as long as it's cooked. Yeah, I don't it is. Eat no, raw it's, stuff. it's like roasted, uh, baked in the oven, and you put butter on it. Ooh. You put hot sauce yes. on it if you want. Yep. You can put hot sauce. Um, what it, else do people put it, on it? Them? I know Charisse, what you were thinking of little necks, where people eat the little necks raw. That isn't what this is. No, <laughs> or cherry stones. Right yeah, now. cherry yeah, stones. Like this, is, this, this is this is it's like that. very finely chopped and it's mixed in. And like Stephanie was saying, they'll put in other meats. Like some people use sausage. <laughs> some people use Portuguese sausages like linguiça, chorizo. Oh, I love that stuff. And they'll mix it all in together and they stuff it into. And I think I think Danny uses chorizo in his. Nope. They mix it all together into this with this stuffing and stuff it on the <laughs> shell, bake it off, and then you eat them warm. Like you put the butter on it, the butter melts. Hit it with some hot sauce. So this 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 guy that we know, we we've been doing food challenges here at the station and making videos. So this guy says he makes the biggest ones around and that nobody <laughs> can eat six of them. So we said, all right, we'll take that challenge. Myself and another person that works at the station. So he comes in with these twelve gigantic stuffed quahogs, and so we just start eating them to see like who can do it. And I think I tapped out after like four. I just couldn't do it. Oh, there was wow. too many. That's what they look like. Oh. And and Gazelle ended up eating all yeah, six, and good. I think it was like thirteen minutes, twelve or thirteen minutes. Really? So you think you can beat that time? Is that what it? What? 
I, I'm willing to bet I could do six of them in eight minutes or less. That's tough. Just yes. don't do the hot wing challenge that we did. No. I, I won't eat chi- chicken wings on a bone. I, I've told you, like today well, when we were talking about food, I'm wicked. even even if they could get you boneless ones, do not do it. Oh, I've done the um the Wendells, the one the but they call them suicidals. I've done those too. Yeah, one bite. I was able to finish all four. Oh, Matt and I went there. I took one bite out of them, and I was like, "That's it." And then we brought them back to the restaurant that we worked in and put them in the fridge in the kitchen. Oh, no. And the next day, one of the dish and you know how like hot stuff gets more spicy when yeah. it's in the fridge. So the next day, one of the dishwashers is like, they can't be that hot. So he takes it out and he starts eating it. And because it's been in the fridge, you don't get that heat right away. But so it he intensifies eat, when he it goes ate down. the whole chicken off the bone. Oh, no. And then, oh, no, they were boneless because I remember the lady bitching at me that she couldn't do boneless suicide wings because she didn't want to be responsible. Yeah. And so he ate the whole thing and, like, he was like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> no, they were ridiculous. But this, see, what we did is we made it worse. Because when you go and you get those, it's one spice. Mm-hmm. It's one recipe that you're trying four times. We said we're going to try one each of four of the hottest wings on the South Coast. Mm-hmm. So one was ghost pepper. One was Carolina Reaper. Mm-hmm. So there are all these different concoctions of sauces. And I, I will go on record right now as saying, like, Carolina Reapers will... They're reapers because they rip apart your stomach. Like, I just could feel it, like, tearing. I have not tried those. Mm-hmm. Worst feeling ever. Matt, are those one of the ones that you grew? Did you grow reapers? Okay. Because I don't, I don't know if anybody should ever do that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'd be afraid if you were just touching them to pick them. But, yeah. Mm. So. Well, I imagine that's going to hurt if you rub your eyes afterwards. And then there was always that chicken finger on uh, yeah. that. The uh, chicken nugget one, too, for McDonald's. Somebody said eating, like, 20 pieces of chicken nuggets in, like, three minutes. Yeah, we... So when I was on the cruise, some of my old friends from high school were doing a McNugget challenge, and they were, like, trying to get me to go into it, and I was like, I'm not going to be here. And I'm not sure I would do it, even if I was. I used to polish off a 20 nugget, no problem. Now I get, like, four in, I'm like, whoa, that's enough. Yeah. I don't think I could do 20, but I used to do 10. Well, while, um, while, while we are still on the subject of food, we will talk about ghosts, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. We but, got another whole hour to the show. <laughs> but while we're talking about food, what sauce, Stephanie, from McNuggets? What sauce? Yes. Do you really need that answer? You want me to just tell the audience because you already know? No, tell the audience. I'm not asking for my benefit. I'm asking for theirs. Ranch. They have ranch at McDonald's? Yes. yes. Okay. Sherry, what sauce for you for McNuggets? Ranch with chicken McNuggets? Yes. Wow. Ranch is delicious with everything. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Yes. Um, she should just move to Hidden Valley. I, I, do, <laughs> I do, believe it or not, I do put ranch or blue cheese on my pizza. Uh, yes, ranch on pizza. General pizza yes. or like buffalo chicken no, pizza? General. No, any Even pizza. Even if I get sausage or pepperoni, I'll put it on. I'll, I'll tell you my pizza topping. Go ahead. Ah. Sherry. Well, okay, we gotta do nuggets so, first. Yeah, nuggets. Um, either the uh, sweet and sour or the barbecue. Sweet and sour all the way for me. I can't do the barbecue. You're all wrong. You all gave the wrong answer. <laughs> Are you gonna say like the Mulan sauce or something? Do they even still have that? I don't think so. Honey mustard. Hot mustard. Mm-hmm. Really? The, the McDonald's hot mustard. You will not go wrong with that. Give it a try. It's got just enough, like a little bit of kick. It's not really hot. It has a little bit of a kick, but it has a good mustardy taste, and it's phenomenal with the McNuggets. Hmm. And even when they used to have those like really crappy like dark meat nuggets, yeah, like they thankfully got rid of those. But at least you could you <laughs> it would hide the taste, and you you will like that so much to the point where you will put it on your McChicken sandwiches. Like it's that good. Maybe something I new. Maybe even, top even of pizza. you may even no. put it. You may even put it on your McGangbang. <laughs> oh my god. You guys have never had a McGangbang? No. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Here we go. Oh, boy. We're falling down well, this hole. Now <laughs> now that you've got them going. Anybody in the chat room ever had a McGangbang? Have you actually ordered one? Yes. And said those words? Yes. Okay. And they gave it to me at the Wareham McDonald's. Really? They knew exactly what I was talking about. And then All another right. time another time, I asked for one and they told me no. When I tried to get one for my son, they're like, we don't know what that is. I was like, just give me a McChicken and a McDouble. So you go to the McDonald's and you get <laughs> you get a Mc, you get bad. a McDouble and a McChicken, <laughs> and this was great when they reach a dollar because this is like the ultimate two dollar <laughs> sandwich that you can get. So you get the McDouble and the McChicken, 
you know how the McDouble has the two patties mm-hmm. with the one piece of cheese in the middle? You open up between the two patties of the McDouble. You take said McChicken and you put the entire sandwich, bread and all, on top of one of those patties, and then you put the rest of it on top of that. Oh my god. And you eat this all together. So you have an entire McChicken sandwich with the bun in between the two burgers of a McDouble. And then you just start eating it. And it is when you're drunk, it's like the best thing you can put. What's that called? The McGangbang. It's better. It you will love that more than David Hasselhoff loved that floor cheeseburger. <laughs> like it is awesome. Gross. So the, uh, you know, we and the funny thing is, we <laughs> were at McDonald's we'll you know today. We were at McDonald's today. I wish I would have heard of this. I would have tried it. I thought well, you knew. No, I've never heard of that. There's there's one down the street that's open 24 <laughs> hours. So after the show, you can get a yeah, McGangbang on your way home. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can you get ate. extra cheese on it though? Yeah, you can. Okay. But like, you're gonna do extra cheese. You can <laughs> extra get it on a regular. Cheese, lots of pickles. No, no pickles. <laughs> there's there's a lot of like secret menu items at McDonald's. Really? There's the there's the Air Land and Sea Burger. What? That's where you. That is disgusting. You get, I can already it's, guess. That's a, got, probably has the fish, the burger. It's a Big don't Mac with the chicken and the <laughs> fillet yep. of fish in it. But I don't think you have to put the bread in. It. I think it's just you stack the three patties on top of it. And they'll make that. Some places will. Some places won't. Some places will make you buy the sandwiches separately and you have to make it. They'll know what you're talking yeah. about, but they make you do it on your own. Wow. I guess there's like secret menu stuff for every fast food place that people have invented. Hmm. So, yeah, the McGangbang. Give it a try. <laughs> I, ha- I highly recommend <laughs> it. Uh, but pizza, we were talking about pizza topping. So yeah, we're w- back to pizza. When now. we were in school <laughs> and they had those like... Back when we went to school, kids, you could have pizza. <laughs> but they have that like cardboard, like Square, Ilios type yeah. pizza. So my favorite thing to do, because at our school they sold um, hoodsy cups for dessert, I would take the hoodsy cup and I would spread it all over my pizza, and I would eat it like that. For some reason, it was good. Are you kidding me right now? You come, come on. <laughs> what do is you, wrong with you? Do, you? do you dip fries in a frosty? No. no. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Good we night, have to go night. over to Wendy's Sorry. before it closes. <laughs> That's you have to dip fries in a frosty. It's so hey, good. I'm literally getting text messages from people listening right now <laughs> going, ooh, with nasty green faces and other ones questioning what the F going on Listen, with your McGangbag. Folks, I am not a slender gentleman, okay? This is, this is how I've lived my life for a long time, and now I'm paying the price for it, but okay. Mm. So getting back to ghosts. Oh, ghosts? <laughs> but you know what? Ghosts and pizza go hand in hand. That's true. You we talked eat about when that you're today. Investigating. I have to. That's what I live off of is an entire that's why giant she does pizza what she does. to myself. Anybody that's ever done any type of event with me and I'm doing readings, you know I put down a large pizza myself. It's the truth. The I can't. Thing, but. Huh? I think, though, that bears out some of the fact that when you are doing this, especially doing what you're doing when you're giving the readings, but... You know, investigations take extra out of you. They take extra energy from you. They take right. extra. So you kind of want that carb load. You kind of want something sugary or sweet. You want that caffeinated drink because when you're there, it is draining. And we know all about, I mean, we've had some TV experiences, but we know all about kind of what the draining experiences of just doing an investigation. It must be even harder when you're doing it for a television show because you're trying to give your all for the investigation, but you also have to worry about taking the audience along for the ride as well. well right, so basically entertaining. Really a, hard, a long day. Right. Well, we're going on, what, how many hours now? <laughs> 15, 16? And that's, you know, almost sometimes that you're doing a day. Yeah. You know, so when you're for going sure. out, uh, you know, you, you start anywhere. You know, of course, it depends on daylight saving time and, you know, and all of that stuff. But, you know, if you're going out between... Um, you know, between, I'll say like two to five, um, you know, you're at least doing a 12 hour day. Right. Uh, and sometimes you can do 14, 15 hours, you know, depend, of course, you know, depending on activity, if a di- activity is going good, you're going to just stay you're there. You're just going to ride it out. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it's a long day and you're just, you feel like you're just snacking I most mean, of the day. By the, by the just... time you came into the show though, they had a format to some degree, you know, they had an idea. They, they probably had a plan of attack of how to best go about Filming an episode and and filming an investigation, so you you know you didn't have to go through a lot of that feeling out process that the whole cast did early on in the Ghost Hunters run. Was it easy for you to kind of come into that and 
jump into what they were doing already? Or was it like, oh, everything that I thought I knew about how to do this has completely been changed now? Um, no. Um, actually, it was, it was, you know, the first few times just to see how they do the whole show. You know, mm-hmm. it, um, you know it's ex- pretty much exactly the same, you know, with every show with, you know, okay, now we're going to do the truck shots and then we're going to do this and that, you know, do the whole security meetings and, you know, so like every little thing, which is, you know, some of the 12 to 15 hours, you know, that that's all in together. Um, but, you know, just a couple of days just to figure out what their schedules are and, and you, you know, you just get into it. Um, investigation wise, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, well, first of all, you know, I mean, obviously like I've, known Jason forever I've known Grant forever so in obviously I watched the show you know yeah. so I mean I kind of knew what their little thing was just by watching the show but I also I talked to them a lot about uh what we did you know what they do they what they did um so that was nice and easy because at least I knew part of the crew going in um but doing things like putting the um what do you call it the uh the video things together and all that stuff I said, don't look at me. I never really did. <laughs> well, you know, I'm like pointing to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I never really did any of that. So, but they actually helped me a lot. They were just, you know, they took their time. This is what we need to do. Sometimes it took me a long time to put like the, uh, you know, the video on top of the, uh, I can't even talk right now because it's late. Um, <laughs> what is the it? tri, like the tripod, the tripod you know, like putting, <laughs> putting it like all together and stuff. I'm like, oh my that. God, you know, but. And um, so I just felt like I was taking up time because I didn't know what I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But they were they were fine. You know, they were just like, they, you know, it, I mean, you know, the crew, they're awesome. You know, they pretty much put me down that road of exactly what I was supposed to do and um, and where to put these cameras well, and all, you know, and all that. You kind of, of already that. got the way that you want to investigate because you've been, inve- you were investigating before. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we, I mean, the way that I investigate is pretty much, uh, almost kind of the same way as them. Um, you know, I mean, obviously like the debunking and, and disproving and all of that, you know, I pretty much did the, the same thing. Um, I do, when we go in for, um, like when we pair off to everybody, um, because I'm, you know, the last person <laughs> there. I kind of ride their coattails just to see how they investigate. Um, you know, each person does little investigation, you know, a little bit different. So I'll go in there and investigate with them and uh, just kind of feel out how they did it um, just so that we can kind of work together, you know, and it's just, you know, nice and smooth and, and kind of feed off of each other. Um, a little bit better, so um, it was a little bit different with each with each person, um, but overall. Just so everybody's aware, we're on the radio now, so no swears. So behaving mm-hmm. now. Oh. <laughs> uh, so Did every. Hit hit? Do you think he was just facing the wrong way, Ben Carson? That's right. I fixed it. Oh. <laughs> ben Carson. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I just uh, it it did seem like a smooth transition. Um, I think I was more intimidated and well, but it's, nervous. It's different, though, because, like, y- you've done investigations and you've had experiences mm-hmm. and things have happened and you've kind of been able to take a step back and think about it while it's happening. Mm-hmm. But it's a different story when somebody grabs you and says, okay, come over here now and we want to film you telling us exactly what just happened, you know, um, unless you're doing your OTFs later. Right. But. No, we... Um, we usually do it like right, you know, like so, you, you know, you spend your hours or whatever in, in a room and, and do your investigations. Um, and then after that, then we'll do the OTFs. Which, for anybody that doesn't know, you know, when you see like on, they, they have somebody pulled aside and they ask them, so, what, you know, what just happened? And you're kind of explaining what it was. Mm-hmm. It's still when it's fresh in your mind, but so at least they weren't taking you out of the moment to have to. To do oh that. yeah, yeah. I know. In, in the show, it looks like that. Right. It looks like and, they're pulling And some shows out, do want to pull you, know? you out in the moment and get it right yeah. then and there. Which I don't think is you know like when you're in the moment, you're you want right. to keep doing you know and I just want to do what I'm doing. Yes, yes. Um. But yeah, so after we're finished with that that portion, then they'll pull us aside and then we'll do our interviews. Um. So yeah, of course that's a little different. Uh, doing 
obviously doing investigations with the cameras right here. You know, I wasn't used to that. So that took a little time to get used to. But somebody's yeah. like following you around now. And, yeah. And you know, yeah. I mean, I used to be, because I wasn't used to it, um, we'd be walking into the a building and I'd have, I'd open up, or the person would open up the door in front of me, um, one of the other investigators, and then they would open up the door for me. Well, I would open it up for the camera guy. <laughs> I'd be like, like, here you go. <laughs> They're like, no, Sherry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> They're no. like, We're not here. don't worry about me. <laughs> We're not here. Like, oh yeah, okay. So we had to shoot it again. You know, I mean, I just, I always forget. Well, I, I think one thing that I do think is that I, I would love to see everybody that's involved in an investigation do, like, one TV show one time so that they all know the proper volume level. Mm-hmm. You know, like, once you do a level check, they're like, okay, don't whisper now. Like, talk in that voice all the time. And that's something that, like, people are like, oh, well, that's TV interfering on the investigation. No, that's oh. how you should be talking on the investigation, yeah. too. Like, it, it drives me crazy when people like drop their voices and start whispering like, no, stop doing that because I'm going to think that that's something else. Even if I'm not recording an EVP session, I'm going to hear a whisper. You know, just keep it outright. If you're talking crap about me, that's fine. Let me hear you talk crap about me. I'm bad at that because when I'm filming, I'm reading. So I tend to not really talk to myself, but kind of talk to myself before I say what I have to say to whoever I'm talking to. So that's been a really bad habit of mine. Don't no. Don't, don't yeah. whisper. That's the worst thing. Nope. But really well, is. farting is the worst thing. Well, Whispering well, close to. <laughs> Actually, no. I'd rather have somebody do that. What? I, I'd what? rather have somebody do that. Well, At be- least because you know what it is. That's true. Yeah, but with whispering, no, no, no. no hiding it. But <laughs> no. at least you know. Yeah. Like today in that hallway. You're like, was that a person? Was <laughs> it not a person? That? Yeah, you weren't there for that. No. Somebody farted in the hallway today at that Paracon. No. I almost died. It was so bad. Glad I wasn't out there. It probably was not me, but I'm not 100% sure. (laughs) So here's, we do have a question from the chat room. Yes. Is uh, somebody wants to know how much of the mainstream TV show stuff is pre-scripted and how much of it is edited after the fact? This is a question that we've been talking about. We have. You know, for (laughs) 11 and a half years now, how much of this is scripted going in? And I don't think people understand the fact Mm -hmm. that it's not scripted. Right. Right. Like we don't call it reality TV. We call it unscripted TV. Mm-hmm. Right. Because in actuality, what's going on isn't necessarily real. It's not real because it's not, you know, 14 hours of nothing happening footage. It's, we're kind of giving you the condensed version of what went on yeah. and kind of the best of moments. Like, for example, if this is, this is a way that I kind of describe it to people. Say Ghost Hunters is your favorite band. You don't like every single song that your favorite band is going to play in concert. I mean, there's a good time. You're like, oh, I'm kind of tired of hearing this one. Yeah. You know, oh, we're going to do a cover song. Like, why? I don't want to hear you do somebody right. else's song. So, like, sometimes you say, I wish I could just get just the songs that I want to hear. And so that's kind of what it is with an episode, is you're, you're getting just what they want you to see of what happened because they know that you're not going to care about the rest of the stuff right. that didn't happen. But, you know, people... I a lot of people get upset, you know, of, of you know the things that might have happened or whatever. They don't understand, you know, why aren't you guys talking about this? Why aren't we talking about that? Describing something or going to actually see what something is. We actually do all of that, but you know, how many hours were you filmed? And right. They just don't, you know. Like we're at least at a piece of property, like for at least two days. You know, so just say if it's the 12 hours a day, that's 24 hours just in those two days. But you still have to do all the, you know, the beginning stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, all the reenactment stuff just so that they can get, you know, the story, the history and stuff like that. And that that part is scripted just so the people realize somebody has written all that out to have it make sense. Right. So that the history is, yeah. You need some type of foundation, though. Right. Something to work off of. Right. That's the entire reason why you're there. If there's no story, then... When you're There's yeah, when I you're do. getting all that stuff at the beginning, like that's not just randomly somebody talking about it off the top yeah. of their head. Like Jason doesn't go into every location knowing it's complete history. Somebody's right. provided him with their experience and their stories, and they say that they say, yeah. you know, we heard from people that this is what happens. Right. Um, and then so you take all of those hours and then condense it into only forty three minutes. You know, and people just don't understand. You know, yeah, we did go and look. Like you feel like you have to explain. Every little thing, because of all the little messages, you know. No, we, you know, we did that, and we did that, we did that. We, how did you know that noise? Because we went to go and look. It didn't show you, 
but we went to we really went to go and look. At least you, you know? got forty three minutes, and <laughs> you got to work with all that. Unlike the early seasons, when out of that forty three minutes, twelve of it was Jason or Grant telling us what an EVP is again and again. I still do that to Grant every time I see him. I'm like, Grant, Grant, do it. Grant, tell me. Grant, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> EVP is electronic voice phenomenon. <laughs> 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 They just, they just they used to have to do it all the time. All now the time, they don't have yeah. to because the audience is savvy to it now. Yeah, yeah. So we just had somebody say in the chat room, "It may not be scripted, but networks own you, and you can't be yourself." Correct? No, that is that not is true. Not, no. That not is true. not correct. In my own personal experience, not at all. If yeah. they didn't want you to be yourself, why do they need to have you? Right, because yes. they could just plug somebody yeah. into that role or hire an actor. Absolutely. But no, they hire you for your personality. I, listen, l- let me tell you something from the person who works on the other side of it. Having real people that are investigators is the worst thing because, like, it would be so much easier to just work with actors and make everything up. Right. Yeah. And it would, it would just be so much easier to produce and it would, you would see it, you know, there'd be a lot more shows like that because it would be easier for companies to do and so they'd want to do it. Using real people who have real experiences and real interactions and real ideas and real theories and real approaches and differing approaches is what makes it interesting. Right. And then you have clashing personalities on top of it, which creates some type of You know, another thing, though, is there's two different types of paranormal shows out there, too, that people have to realize. There is a per se scripted version. Well, the recreation shows. The recreation. My Ghost Story, A Haunting, The Haunted, Paranormal Witness. Those types of shows, yes, those are scripted. But 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 hold on now, because they're not scripted. Well. But they're... Crafted. Yes. It's probably a better way to yes, say it. Yes, I'll agree with that. So when you're on my ghost story sharing yep. your experience about yep. the SK Pierce mansion, you're telling what really happened to you there. Yes. And they're kind of building the story of yes. that, what they're telling around, around your telling truth. Them. Yes. So the story is still real it's and it's still, still legitimate, real. but they're just taking that and using that as a launching point for a narrative. Yes. Yes. Which, so there's that different type versus like doing like real ghost hunters or ghost adventures or ghost lab, ghost asylum, whatever. Those types of shows, but the investigative shows, I think, and you're you know you're starting to see those fall by the wayside because the networks like the the stories with the recreations and the narratives better. But I because it's so hard to have a fresh angle on. See, it was easy for Ghost Hunters because they were the first. Okay. So by being the first, you know you you have you you can kind of follow that vision the whole time. Everybody else has to be like, now what do we have to do to be yeah. different than Ghost Hunters? Right. And that's where we've seen some shows that have come and gone very quickly because they're trying too hard to be different. Mm-hmm. And and that's where you see those different personalities that come out and you say, well, can these personalities carry a show? Because ultimately, and I say this all the time and I know that people get mad, television networks don't care if ghosts are real. Television don't. networks don't care if you discover whether or not ghosts are real. They just care about if people are going to tune in and be enthralled by your investigation of it. So right. people talk about this whole genre of paranormal TV and what it is that you're doing, but what you're doing is no different than ice road truckers or mm-hmm. you know the guys who try to shoot guns in ridiculous ways. Like Everything is just somebody with a unique niche thing that they do and people watching that unique niche thing and how it works. Right. So like, and that's, that's the other thing. And I'm sure you hear this a lot of where, you know, I just, I, as a paranormal investigator, I just, I just feel like these shows aren't really made for me. They're not made for you. <laughs> Why no. do you want to watch somebody do on TV what you do anyway? Yeah. Right. A doctor doesn't go home and watch reruns of ER. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think not. Uh, yeah, right? Because yeah. all you're going to do is pick it yeah. apart and say, that's not how I would do it. Yeah. yeah. I think the only ghost show that I ever did watch was maybe the first two seasons of Ghost Hunters, and that was it. Really? Yep. Yeah. And that was before I you were really even, doing yeah. it on so a regular basis. You. Why? I figured you would at least watch me. I didn't watch you. John. But I, yeah, John. I, but, but yeah she did... Did you watch I my episode yet? Did you, you watch, watch it? Mine. You better go watch it. That's you, what I get listen, from her. As my agent representing me, you need to know what you're you're selling, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. No, you're right. So you're right. that makes sense. See, I made sure I watch Sherry all the time. I made sure I watched Tim once because on South Coast and everything. And he's I don't done. think you've ever seen me do readings. Yes, I have. When? When we went to your old shop. On John, we're on we're on the radio. You got to talk in the microphone. When now. we yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> when we went to your old shop, um, on a cushion and F. Nope, that wasn't me. 
I didn't get one from Who are you taking on our show when she's not around? <laughs> Listen, let's just not go there. Yeah, let's not go there. Let's not go there. I thought... Nope. Oh, okay. No, nope, so see, you had to watch my, my show to, okay. to get the, the full effect. Okay. So, point proven. Yep. Point I, proven. If it makes you feel better, I maybe watch the first two minutes of your episode, and then I tuned out. And it had nothing to do with you. <laughs> I do so. I do watch you when you're on shows, John. I, I have, appreciate I it. have seen Sherry on TV, though, because I tuned into that episode to watch myself. Just that one episode. Right, because she yeah, was just because she was on there. Yeah. When she, and she was, was on very briefly at the beginning and said, nah, that's enough. Yeah, and I didn't uh, even know that she was on there no. until we were staying in the same hotel room. <laughs> Yeah, we won't go there either. No. Do, do, can, all right. Just, let's back this up a second. Can you picture We're these on the radio. two We're all on the radio. weekend? <laughs> oh, I am. I'm not going to say nothing. Whatever you're picturing, John, it no, can only get the rest two of us in trouble. All weekend at four o'clock in the morning drinking wine, okay, oh. and being so silly the way that they are. Where we, we were up till five. five. I know, but I'm saying at least four o'clock in the morning. It was pretty crazy with these two. So, no, wait, no listen. We we're have we're a good time. perfectly. We're perfectly fine, perfectly innocent. There's halos above our heads. We're good. Mm-hmm. Just light making out. Light. <laughs> no <it>. tongues. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the... They're laughing way too hard at that. <laughs> because. Was it Jay? Uh, Jay that's... was making comments about that, joking around and telling yeah. people that we were sleeping together that night, and we told people that they'd have to pay for a live stream. So there's a serious question in the chat. <laughs> Shari, somebody wants to know if you have reached any conclusions about the paranormal based on your investigative experiences. Um, through out, uh, I mean, I've been doing this since the 90s um, with all of my experiences, my personal experiences, um, whether investigating or not, uh, just because I've had a lot of uh, personal experiences, you know, at home and stuff. Um, I definitely believe in ghosts, um, in spirits. I mean, with all the experience, let me see. I, from being touched, I mean, I've seen them, I felt them, I've heard them. I, you know, have you I've made had any every experience? But kind of determinations as to what you think that they are. Like not even uh, anything that you have like proof of that you can say. Here's why I think it's this, but just. You know, do you feel like you're dealing with a disembodied soul? Do you think you're dealing with a thought form? Do you think you're dealing with something that was never human? Um, I don't know if I've ever encountered something that was never human, per se. So you think these are... Um, I don't know. I just, I just, I guess I always felt like um, who I encountered were... Um, Oh God, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but um, I don't know. I mean, I I do believe in like guardian angels and stuff like that. I definitely believe in that. Um, I definitely seen uh, family members. So, you know, when I see something, when I see people that I've known, um, you know, I mean, I know that they were here, and now they're, you know, I know that they've passed, and now, you know, I see them in front of me. So I. I just think that they. <laughs> I guess. I guess that my experiences would be, you know, because I. The, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of know what you said, and, and Stephanie, you might think, you know, kind of along these lines a yep. little bit, maybe with your abilities. But like, I almost feel like when it is somebody that you know, when it is a loved one that's around you, like it's not a ghost, <clears throat> right? So. Like if all of a sudden you're sitting in your house and your grandmother comes into the room and starts talking to you, if you pull out a K2 meter, it's not going to make a difference because it's it's not... It's because you welcome it. That's why. You, it's not an unfamiliar but I, feeling to But you. I welcome any ghost of any place that I go into and I can still <laughs> okay, so it's, try, it's, to, try to take physical readings of it. The way that I describe it, especially in my classes, especially when I teach, um, whether it be intuition or Reiki, when you enter a room of people that you do not know... You know, like if you're going to a party, you automatically walk in and you kind of scan the room and you know immediately, I'm going to like this person. I'm not going to like this person. I don't know how I feel about this person. And then you almost feel nervous because even though like you might be a complete extrovert, but walking into but a room full of people, you, you have that unfamiliar feeling of walking in. So it's the same thing with a spirit that you are unfamiliar with. It gives you that feeling. Now, if you walk into your own party with people that you invited you like everybody it's a warm welcoming feeling 
But you're talking about a feeling. I'm talking about being able to take a, a physical measurement. I'm talking about actually having it be something that is quantifiable. And I think almost like, like for example, if if it is a loved one who comes mm-hmm. in to the room, but, all right, this we're we're deep. we're sitting in my living room, and the guy who used to live in the house that I've never met, <laughs> that I don't know, but he died in the house. Say whatever. We'll make the narrative whatever people want it to be. But we're sitting in there. You, the three of us, four of us, five of us, or we're all sitting on my couch. The dead landlord walk. Uh, the dead home. <laughs> homeowner walks in mm-hmm. and is standing in the room and everybody, uh, do you see that? Yeah, I see that. But if we're all the same of us sitting in the room and my grandmother walks into the room, I'm like, does anybody else see that? There's a good chance that nobody else does mm-hmm. because it's not, it's because almost like it's we, almost like they can choose. We have a wavelength that can't be like, we have a wavelength that's kind of like a direct path to those loved ones. Which is why sometimes, like, you would have say, you know, I, I have these dreams all the time where they visit me. Or, you know, I just get this feeling when my grandmother's around me. Or I get this feeling when my mom's around. Or whoever it is that you've lost. You know, it's it's different than something that you can say, oh, every time that I pull out my K2 meter, I know it's my grandmother. Okay, you know, so what you're describing, too, could also be looked at as a difference between something that has crossed over and something that's earthbound. So that comes into question. But I don't... F- They should both be quantifiable. No, I know. But what you're describing is the reason why not everybody is feeling your grandmother a certain way is because she's crossed over and she's only coming to you. Whether she's in the room or not, people aren't feeling it the same way that they that they would feel an earthbound spirit who is trying to communicate in a way with cold spots or, you know, manifesting and all that. It's it's very, very common, if, almost to a T with those two experiences. If somebody comes to see somebody and it's <laughs> something that's meant just for them, do you still see it? Yeah. Like, even if the rest of us wouldn't experience it, like, just because of the way because that I'm you're... Because weird, yeah. Because of the way that it works, you right. would still see it? But I have also been in other, um, in other situations where we'll say, okay, I'm with Candace. And she'll look at me and she's like, wow, I feel your grandmother so strong right now. She's standing right here. And I say, yep, absolutely, because I was having a conversation at that time. So she'll pick up on it. But I've also been in other places with people that aren't as sensitive and say, wow, I feel a really strong female spirit right now and kind of start to describe what my grandmother is. So, yes, other people can pick up on it, but it depends on how how open you are to it or how much you hone in on something like that. So it is possible, but it's not as common as an entire room full of people communicating or seeing or experiencing an earthbound spirit because that spirit is still trying to manifest in the way that they, we would physically because they have not crossed over yet. Sherry, in your experiences, both on Ghost Hunters and just in other investigations, have you encountered somebody that you feel was a direct connection with you that wasn't related mm-hmm. to where you might have been investigating but was actually rather somebody from your own life coming back? Um, the only way I can say, the only thing I can think of is, the only thing I can think of is, um, a lot of times when we do this, there are people that, just say if there's there's five of us, one person would have an experience, but nobody else will. I mean, not, not physically seeing them. But there's so many times that that happens, so we're thinking, you know, well, why are why are you getting this experience, but none of us right. are, you know? Sometimes we all get the experience, but sometimes only that one person gets it. You know, every once in a while, you're thinking, okay, some of these people are a little, you know, maybe they're faking <laughs> something because we don't, you know, we don't experience anything, but that one person keeps getting something. Um, however, it does happen uh, quite a bit, so you do wonder why is this person only connecting with that one person? I mean, we see that happen a lot in investigations when you go to like historic places where something will come through and you'll say, why, why is it this? Why, you know, we walk, especially it must drive, you know, TV producers who are there crazy because you're saying like, here's this story that we're trying to find. Here's this person that we're trying to find. And, and this is who we're trying to make a connection with, and something totally different comes in and changes the whole thing up. As as in, as just investigators, not on television, when that happens, it causes you to kind of rethink everything that you've already been planning. And it, and it yeah. can change the style of what you do. You know, like if, if you hear that, oh, this place is supposedly haunted by this tough guy, and, you know, he, he gets combative with everybody that asks him questions, 
and all of a sudden you're interacting with like some childlike spirit. Right. You know, like it, it changes the whole mindset of what it is that you were trying to do. Right. Right. And again, it's like you don't even know if it's not that spirit just taking a different approach with you either. Like saying, like, I, mean, I know that I've been combative with everybody else, but I like you, so I'm going right, to be nice to you. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing that, that I do um, like about um, Ghost Hunters, because I don't, um, is that we do have girls and <laughs> women and men um, on the show. Because sometimes, like, if you're dealing with a, a, a little girl or a right. little boy or something, you know, sometimes it's easier for Sam and I to go in there, you know, for them to, you know, okay, well, you know, we're, we're mothers and, you know, we can, you know, and we can talk to them. Maybe they're a little afraid to talk to the guys, you know, or something like that. Or the guys, you know, better to go in there because they have some, you know, some jerk ghosts, <laughs> you know, in there and they want nothing to do with women, you know, so it's I, I like doing the different teams because you never know who's going to so the balance attract is, to what. The balance is beneficial. You know, yeah. So what you're really saying is Ghost Adventures sucks. No, no, no I'm just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. Absolutely not. I used, I used, to, lo I used to love to play that game. I used to try love to try to get all the shows to talk crap about the other ones. Nobody no. ever would. No, everybody <laughs> does their own things. I, that's no, just I one know, thing that I... No, but I understand I... what you're saying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, that I like. Can you do me a favor and give everybody the call-in numbers? Because we're getting a ton of questions yep. that I can't keep up with. 508-996-0500. 877 996 If you want to call in, you can also, uh, you know, you can also kind of, uh, I guess you can email your questions. I, I don't have my email open, but I can get them on my phone. Spooky crew at spookysouthcoast.com. But we would prefer if you called in and shared them with us. Of course, vocally. we want to talk to you for sure. And we like to hear your voice, but you can ask them in the chat room as well. We just, you know, there's a lot of comments coming in and out. So uh, if you want to call in, certainly we welcome your questions for our guest. Shari, I'm, I, I was stumbling over your name multiple times getting ready leading into uh, the event, but Shari D. Benedetti. Yes, thank it you. It took me a while to thank practice. You. Thank I was you. always adding in extra syllables. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, and John Brightman. Bright <laughs> oh, my God. Brightmantini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making you Italian. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, I've had a few of those bright mantinis. They knock you on your ass. <laughs> Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Salem. That's see. There you go. Now you have a name oh, for the God. drink, the bright mantini. <laughs> that that works. See? But, sounds but I like sounds certain flavors though. I gotta name it by the flavor. That's mm, true. That's gonna get weird real quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to bring <laughs> again. Some right? again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know you were a creamsicle to. fan. Love creamsicle. I gotta Gross. I gotta make some for some other people. So no, I'll make some for you. no more. Creamsicle is yes. the way to go. Creamsicle is the best. I will never try any of that, John. I'm sorry. You gotta. Nope. I'm sitting at your house. Nope. You and Brendan. Still sealed. I'm going to have to talk even, to Brendan. Even Brendan didn't have any? He hasn't had any. Is that yet. the no. apple pie? It's yes. the apple pie. Oh my God. It's been sitting in my garage. It's like somebody poured you a liquid glass of apple pie. I know you tried it. I can't. It was I'll phenomenal. die. Tried no, it. You won't. Yes, I will. For I didn't, sure. I didn't try have it. Have you seen the size of me? I it dove into matter. it. There was people at uh, um, Scaricon that would as tiny as you drinking it. Yeah, full glasses. That lasted. Exactly. Sherry and I were sitting in that corner watching. Did you see how listen, quick all that went? Listen, they didn't do very well. Oh, we saw everybody. <laughs> yeah, we saw everybody. Yeah, yeah, we, we stuck to the it wine. Wasn't. It was it was easier. It was a good show for us. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, just, is, this is the time where we mentioned you also don't drink when you're investigating. No. We, we're no. talking about non-investigative situations. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were talking an after, after party. party. Yes, yeah, for at sure. a convention. I, um, right. Yeah, no. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, friend. I... I did, listen, I did drink one time before I tried spirit communication. How'd that go? It was all right. I had, <laughs> he I had communicated with spirits before right. and after. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was on Thanksgiving, okay. and I'd had a couple of drinks, and the family's like, so you have a Ouija board on your, ba oh, in your oh, trunk, right? And I was like, yeah. So I, I had a few drinks, and I just said to everybody, listen, just so you know, I really shouldn't be leading this right now because I've had a few beers, but everybody was like, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> And so we did. everything was okay. We just talked to my grandfather, but well, it could have been worse. I have to, I have yeah. to preach safety. Yes. What, what was the other thing that somebody was? Oh, uh, today I had to. I, when I'm talking about Fort Tabor, mm. I'm like, I have to stress everybody. Please don't go there. Don't please trespass. Don't they don't want you to go there. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, we've had issues. Yep. And we had, yeah, we had issues that night yeah, too. Yeah, did. I was gonna say, like, when yeah. you guys were filming there, I know that there were some problems. There was, there was a few arrests yes. that night. Yeah. Yep. Police. Everything. Everybody came down. And uh, so by the time 
Sam and I got in there. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have to worry about any uh, any people or Intruders. animals. It's it was good, good when they go in there first and they clean up all the needles and they <laughs> make sure that there's good no, God. you know, nothing broken, no broken glass in there or anything, mm-hmm. no people living in there. Right. Because there's been issues in the past. But mm-hmm. um, so I, I want to talk to you about that then. When you, when you had the opportunity to investigate Fort Tabor and uh, the stories, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in the stories that they mm-hmm. told in that episode because mm-hmm. <coughs> they were all mine. <laughs> uh, but the the, the thing um, that I, I was really impressed that they they looked for the shimmering man in, in mm-hmm. the tunnel in, in Millicent. Millicent in the Milliken yeah. in Battery Milliken and that's something that was a, that happened in broad daylight the original sighting was we were filming Jeff Belanger's PBS show New England Legends and he was filming something you know how the building is shaped like an H mm-hmm. yes. so he was in like one of the openings at the beginning because they were using the natural light and he's like we're going to be filming over here, so if you guys want to walk down into the tunnels and, and explore and investigate while we're doing this, that's fine with us. Mm-hmm. So we start walking down, and as we're looking down at the other end of the H, we saw this like human-shaped thing that the only thing I can describe mm-hmm. it as is, and you, you know, I don't, you seem like you're pretty well versed in music. You know, Peter Gabriel, you know, Sledgehammer. Yes. Yeah. You know, the end of the video when the guy gets up and he's like all covered in stars in the room. That's the only way I can describe it. Is it look like that? And broad daylight. And so it's like, okay, we're not seeing a reflection off anything because there's nothing down there that's no reflective. There's no light down there. Yeah. yeah. And even in broad daylight, it's that, that whole battery yeah. is pitch black yeah. in the middle. So. We've had some weird you experiences can't see anything. in that place. What I about really the night that you had the event there and somebody said some of the, and it wasn't like, you know, somebody threw something up and hit the roof, like something Oh, no, the roof, yeah, no, we thought the roof was caving yeah. in on us. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, and uh, the clip is hilarious because all we do is swear because we thought we were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> For it, sure. We're right in that dead center, and we're getting these cold spots, which in the middle of an underground tunnel where the openings are going in the opposite direction, how do you have a breeze blowing at you? But we were feeling this cold breeze blowing at us. Mm-hmm. And right before that, there was a psychic that had been in the room that said, there's a young man cowering over in the corner covering his head, and I can't get him to tell me what's wrong. And so we're down there trying to communicate with this, this spirit, when all of a sudden it just instant cold blast. We feel the temperature drop. We're trying to measure it. And all of a sudden it sounds like the roof is caving in on us. And we, thought, an explosion. we thought we were going to oh, die. Wow. We have a recording of it, but the recording of it doesn't sound nearly as loud as it sounded to our ears. Yeah. yeah. And then as soon as, like, I actually, like, jumped into the arms of the guy next to me because he's this big guy, Frank. (laughs) And so as soon as it was done, you know, we're looking around. We're trying to see what would have made that noise. We're like, Mm -hmm. is there a raccoon up there? Is there, you know, did something fall down? Mm -hmm. There was no dust. There was nothing that had moved. So we couldn't figure it out. We were scratching our heads. And it wasn't until later that we figured out that that was also the spot where they used to have the cannons that would fire cannonballs that would shoot over toward Martha's Vineyard and they were so loud that the first time that they ever set them off the neighbor said please don't ever do that again unless it's absolutely necessary because you broke every window every dish from for oh, a four block wow. radius and so that's what we think we might have caught that we might have caught the phantom cannon fire and the reason why that that young man's spirit was bending down and covering his head is because he knew there was a fire in the hole so he's doing a duck and oh, cover that so makes sense. Yeah. yeah and it's I it's just remember crazy. I was yeah. over in the main fort <laughs> and when a bunch of people from your group came over to the main fort and started talking about it i could see it on everybody's faces that were talking like they were actually like a little freaked out because know, they couldn't um, figure where somebody it was came the only time i've ever been scared on an someone came running to me like tim needs you now we, and i was like what happened we thought we were gonna die because he likes to screw around on investigations and not listen to anything i say so <laughs> this wasn't that <laughs> yeah no and when i heard that i was like great what happened is he still alive is he still standing what's going on yeah. i had to run and that's like a 15 minute walk it is it yeah. is so a pretty i ran in 19 degree weather that was cold Actually, that I night. Think, I think <clears throat> me and Moniz and Andrew Lake were over at the underneath thing. Well, well, Walcott? The other batteries? Yeah, the there. other yeah. batteries, the outside <laughs> on the yep. left. And that's where we were, and people were coming over telling us yep. from Milligan. Yeah, yeah. We, I was telling everybody, just go back to the military museum and chill out and relax yeah. because we that were was, freaked out. That was scary. And by the way, the crew must have <laughs> loved having to haul all the equipment down to that battery. Oh, it was... Did it they was at least give walk. you the golf cart? 
They let you drive the vehicle straight down. That's perfect. Oh, TV <laughs> perks. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 By the by the way, the the city of New Bedford is never going to allow anybody in there again. Nope. Really? No filming. <laughs> nothing. Really? Not no, even no. events. No, I went I went before the park board, and last year because we were going to have an event there. Yep. And we had actually already started selling tickets for it, and we already had it up. So they're like, you have to come to the meeting, and I thought it was like just a formality, and they kind of chewed me out a little bit. They're like, not only can we not let you do this. I mean, they explained to me, they're like, listen, you can do it if you want, but you can only go into the Ford itself, and you have to stay on the grass. Well, I can't charge people money to yeah. just do that. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, thank you for coming for us to permission for permission this time. All those other times that you didn't, you should have. I was like, what? I thought <laughs> that the military museum took care of all that. So, like, I'm sitting right next to the, the guy from the military museum, Joe, and I, I completely throw him under the bus. I'm like, <laughs> Joe told me it was okay. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, you can go. Joe, you stay. So I was like, mm. oh, boy. Uh, I, so I was like, oh, is everything all right? And they're like, yeah, no. He had to talk to me about other things. But, um, yeah, so those we're not allowed to do anything there anymore. Even oh. if we, like, oh, said wow. to them, how much is it just to rent it out, yeah. flat fee, we're going to do what we want to do. Nope. Uh, they eventually want to <clears throat> bar off entire battery Millican so that people can't get in. And yeah. they're hopefully, hopefully going to be able to secure it enough that they can start cleaning up the inside of it, right. and then people can go in for tours. I'm sorry, caller. If you want to call back in, 508-996-0500, 877-996-1420. Sometimes I ramble a little bit too yeah. long trying I, to get I to the call. I kept trying to ask you if you wanted to answer that call. but Yeah, I was trying to go to the call, but feel free to call back in, 508-996-0500. Eight seven seven nine nine six fourteen twenty. So, I don't remember from the episode, Cher, but did mm-hmm. you have things happen to you in the Fort Tabor investigation? Uh, yes, not in the fort itself, but Which in seems the Millican. To be the case. Yeah, the Millican um, definitely. Um, like you said, that hallway is pitch black. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't see right in front of you. It's it's really really flashlights really dark. don't even help. Nope. No, no, absolutely don't work not at all. No, um, there. Was a there were a lot of noise, a lot of noises, mm-hmm. and you know by that point because the police have came and everything else, like you know we knew it wasn't any you know there was nobody around, um, but we went into every little room and everything and just I, we so I mean I didn't see anything. I do remember the story about the little boy or some you know person squatting down in the corner, um, and the shimmering man. I know a couple of other things. Um, uh, but just a lot of it. I think of some like footsteps that we heard, and uh, it sounded like maybe somebody uh, like was it, maybe either throwing things or something was dripping or, mm-hmm. or uh, you know all of all those little noises. But it, you go down to the. I mean, there was there's nothing, nothing around, so nobody there. I assume that you went to that area in the dead center, like off to the side, like the way that you usually walk in. It would be on your right hand side. Uh, we we started. The left part of the H, we walked in that way, and then um, and then just you know walked the whole length, mm-hmm. went all into the little all the rooms and all those little. There's that one section in know. the middle where it goes like, there's like multiple chambers, right? Yeah, of it where yes. they have yes. the old artillery transport yes. system. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's when you're in there and you're dead yes. center, and you're getting EMF anomalies. You're like, wait a minute, how is this happening? Because there's no stray signal coming right. into this. Right. There's there should be no like sharp temperature changes. Right. And, you know, that's, we love it because if it's a really hot night when we do an investigation there, like, that's the place to go because it's cool. Right. But on the cold nights, too, we did one investigation, one event there where it was 20 degrees out. It was October. We thought we were going to be fine. It was, like, early October for some night. That night took a huge cold turn, yeah. and it was literally 20 degrees outside. And when we were in there, we're like, oh, it's nice in here. It's, like, 52. <laughs> so <laughs> it has its pluses 52. and its minuses. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Sherry. Do you have a question? Yeah, Tim. What you had mentioned brought back a memory about the shadow guy that looked like he was like starry person. Yes, the the I've man never heard called... that before except my employee. I was a supervisor at a testing company years ago, and my employee told me about her mother living in this uh, apartment. And in the basement, there was just a room she got a bad feeling about. And it was, a, you know, a dark room with a door that goes in. And when she was moving out on her last day, she had to get some stuff downstairs. And she told me that exact thing, like the hair standing up in the back of my neck, just telling you that story. I'd never heard anyone say that before. But she said, 
this guy, she saw a shadow figure come right out with, uh, like, all, like, stars on him. And I never heard that before until you just mentioned it. It's it was the, strange. It was the only other time I'd ever heard of it, too. And, and so this... I've never heard it. But as soon as you said that, I was like, wow. And I can't figure out, like, what it would have been because there should have been nothing that would be reflecting light off like that and not in, like, a million little points like that. You know, it would be one yeah. thing if it was, like, a, a bright light was coming off it, but this was, like... Exactly like you said, like there's all these little stars within the person's shape. Yeah, she said that she just got a sense of pure evil. She just could not get out of that house fast enough. So I just don't know. That's the second time I've ever heard it. See, that's I interesting. Thought, I don't know what it is, uh, but I've never heard that before until you said it. So the, it was strange. The one we encountered, we didn't get a sense of negativity from. We, we thought it was something that was actually just, we thought it was benevolent and it was kind of just looking into what we were doing. So it's interesting now, that hers was definitely. This woman said it, it, it was she always got a bad feeling, in it, very, very negative, and when she saw that, it was just like tremendous amount of dread. She just had to get out of there. Well, it sounds like maybe I'm glad it was on the other side of the battery then. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you very much for the call. And five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. 877-996-1420. I also keep trying to look and make sure uh, that I take a look at the chat room and see what's going on uh, as well. There's, you know, there's, there's been a lot of places that Ghost Hunters has gone over the years. There's been a lot of places that you've investigated outside of the year. What's your favorite place to go to, whether it was on the show, off the show? Is there a place that you like to go back to? Is there a place that you want to go back to? There's many places I want to go to. Mm. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. Um... God, on the, I mean, on the show from, uh, you know, there were a lot of, there were, you know, the, the jails and stuff that we went to, um, was the, the armory, uh, which, which I was thinking about the point where we were talking about before, um, that some spirits go for one person to another. I was thinking about the, um, the armory when we were down, Sam and I were downstairs and, uh, we were getting a lot of things down there. And then we were coming upstairs to like meet to go and you know go to another section, and um, and then I got pinched, and so it was just like you know well why is he pinching me over everybody else like oh, why would it you know right and it's not you know it wasn't like a negative thing it was just you know so I, like I got pinched, um, but I definitely those are the ones that that I like to go to. The ones that you actually have like a physical feeling. I was mm-hmm. gonna about to hit That's you. That's right. Um, <laughs> I was about, illustrate, I was about to your pinch point. her. Illustrate your point. Right yes. well, you, well, you said there's some pinched. places that you want to go. Um, What's one place that you definitely want to uh, well, go? Well, like St. Augustine Lighthouse. Mm, that's on my list. Yes. We'll go together. Yes, please. Okay. We'll Book share it. another hotel room. <laughs> 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 They're walking out. Book it. <laughs> Excuse me, Don. Um, that's where the fun dip comes in. It's Florida. It yeah. sounds like fun till they get there. Yeah. No, it's They're fun. They're not going to enjoy it. Oh, no. no. I've been there. We not been at the lighthouse? Yeah. I was in Florida. I was in Florida once for an hour. I was like, yeah, okay. I was in, just There's in an sunshine. airport. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. It's, it's no, the, the no. lighthouse. The White House is literally the, the I'm talking about the entire it, state of Florida. Oh. The bottom <laughs> of it is about the size of this room. Yeah. Okay. Yep. When you get to the third level, it's about the size of Tim's area back there. And you gotta climb all those stairs. I'm good with that. I'm fine. I mean, I want to go. I think we can fit in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're fine. It's, it's just, the two of us. Well, fit. if the room's the size of me, then we're only going up one at a time. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's nice. It is nice. It is a cool place to check out. Do we have another call? We have another call okay. on the line, and we have about f- five six minutes left. So, good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Sherry. Do you have a question? Yeah. When are you guys uh, thinking about going back to the fort? We're, we're not allowed back. Uh, we, we've had some meetings with the park board. Uh, there's just not, it's not conducive to us being able to run an event there. Um, so we can't. Because basically we'd only be allowed to be on the grass portion of the fort itself. Not allowed inside the batteries. Yeah, you see, I used to go to school down there years ago mm-hmm. when everything was wide open. Yeah. And I've heard from people that, you know, they, they wish it was that way again. But unfortunately, people have taken advantage of that and made it so that it's unsafe to allow that to happen. So it's okay for them to open it up for World War II reenactments? The, yes, because they follow, the, they follow that rule. They, when they go inside, they only stay on the grass. 
From so, the, the events that we've done in the past and the amount of space that we were able to cover and all the buildings that we were able to cover, they're basically cutting us down to one building only on the grass, and that is it, right. compared to the, the four to six buildings that we were in before we're no longer allowed in because of safety reasons. And so not to mention the fact that the people who were buying the tickets and spending yeah. the money to go, they want to go into Battery Milliken. Yes. That's the whole it's reason they're going. It's a huge draw. So we would be taking that away from them, and that's just really not fair. So... But they do, I mean, if people want to get inside the fort, they have plenty of times during the year when they open yeah, up the they fort. Yeah, they open it about once a year. No, it's it's more than that Is now. It? They because told me once. pretty much every time they do some sort of an event down mm -hmm. there, they'll open the doors. Okay. So people can go in, but again, you're limited to just staying on the grass. You right. can't go into any of the casements. You can't go onto the second floor. Nobody's allowed in the lighthouse. So all these well, restrictions are on there. And so now, you know, that's the point that they're at. Maybe that changes if the, you know, if, if, uh, if the the lawyers for the city Change can find minds, a way to, yeah. to can find a way to make it so that the city has less liability if something goes wrong, but uh, I know that Milliken's going to be out for as long as they can't keep it contained and, and keep it safe. And what's mm -hmm. funny is like when we were in there, when we went there to film Jeff's show, mm -hmm. there's a guy in there who's painting the walls yes. and painting over all the graffiti. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you bothering to paint that? If it's like somebody who goes out and gets their car washed, but their engine's dead, yeah. you know, like what's the yeah. point? Right. And and so that's it's because you're filming. No, they didn't even. It had nothing. To do, they didn't even know that anybody was coming to film. They that's they just do what the city regularly. does. Yeah, yeah. The city just sends somebody in there and says, "Go cover over the graffiti." You're better off putting out like a camera to it's, catch the people that are doing it. And there are cameras mm -hmm. for anybody that's listening. There are cameras on the UMass school. There are cameras on the water treatment plant. So the entire spot is covered, and they do. They are able to track who you them. are, yep. and they are able to press charges. So don't think that just because you got in and you got out and nobody pulled up while you were there that you're safe. Mm -hmm. So sorry, caller. I wish that we could yeah. say that we were going to do something, but you know our, our hands are tied. We would love to be back there, but our hands are tied. We have other yeah. stuff up our sleeves now, though. Oh, yeah. All right, you can well. always fly a drone in. Uh, well, I don't know if I'd want to fly a drone into there. No, but you wouldn't be able to see anything. Yeah, it's it'd just be pitch black. Yep. You'd you'd be operating in no, the dark. No, I'm saying. Oh, uh, in, the, into uh, the fort, into Fort Rodman. Yeah. I suppose you could. Wouldn't you be worried about not being able to get it back out? Yes. Yeah, I, true. I, I would just go over it. You certainly can go over it. Yeah. But, but there's I, already a YouTube video of somebody flying over it. Right, and it's it's a pretty good video actually. Yeah, it is. And 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 uh, when Jeff I was actually at the fort when I was watching it. When Jeff did the um, episode of New England Legends too, he flew his drone over it and got a great shot of the whole place. So I mean, we'll see. We'll I mean we'll keep trying and keep hoping, but uh, I wouldn't hold our breaths. All right. All right. Well, Thank you for the call. Thank you. You too. Have a good have night. Have a good night. Yeah, people do want to get out and do an investigation. August twelfth, we have one in Wareham. We do. Uh, the Wareham Historical Society is letting us back for Ghost of the Gateway 2017. And, John, we have the uh, the S.K. Pierce Mansion coming up as well. With September 9th. There's going to be a lot of familiar faces from this room there yes. that night. I think it's uh, us four that are sitting right there. <laughs> uh, right here. Well, and yes. Matt can yes. come, too, if he wants. Absolutely. Yeah. He's more than welcome yeah. to come. Uh, we were just talking to everybody today. Probably in my top three most haunted places I've been. So. I, I'm and like I said, it's, it's definitely weird, in my top five. Weird stuff that happens yeah. there. And we'll definitely talk more about that coming up as we get closer to that event. We're just about out of time for tonight. Uh, if you want to get the Spooky South Coast event tickets, SpookySouthCoast.com. John, if they want to get your tickets real fast. They can go to my Facebook page, and there's a, or yours, or yeah, Stephanie's, or Sherry's. That, and I think we have a link up on yep, our site, too, It's a link well. right up on there for Eventbrite. So there you go. Those are the ways to get the tickets to those. Come on out, have some fun with us. Uh, and... We'll be back again next Saturday night to talk more about the paranormal. It's what we do. We're here each and every Saturday night, Spooky South Coast. Find us online, SpookySouthCoast.com. So until next week, for Matt, for Matt, for Stephanie, for Chris, for John, for Sherry, I'm Tim. Stay spooktacular.